How we doing, everybody? Uh, this is That Our Nerd coming at you with a histogram tutorial here. Um, by the end of this, you're going to be making some beautiful histograms here in R. So just to start, there's this uh, data sets library that's loaded with just everyone that has R. And if you do this little help thing here, it shows you all the different data sets that you can use. Um, so this way you can follow along if, if you want to here. So we're going to be working with this error quality uh, data set here. So New York air quality measurements. And if we take a look at this, you can see some of the different variables that we have. Um, so we have the ozone, the solar R, which I think is radiation, maybe, I don't know. Uh, wind, temp, month, day. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to plot a histogram of the solar radiation. Um, you notice there's some NAs in here. And in R, NA means that it's missing. So we'll, we'll be able to see what happens if, uh, if we have missing data with these histograms here as well. Okay, so just a quick easy way, we say hist, right? So that's our histogram. We'll say error quality dollar solar dot R. Right, so what this is doing is we're just getting our vector that has the, our column that has the solar radiation numbers. And boom, we already got a pretty uh, okay looking histogram there. Uh, but that's that's not good enough, right? So we want to change a couple things here. Um, so let's say we want to title it, um, and for that we use we use main. So you say main is equal to uh, whatever you want to call it. So we'll say histogram of solar radiation, um, and we probably want an x x label and a y label, right? We want to label these axes here. Uh, so we'll say our x lab, right? Our our label for our x axis. That's going to be solar radiation. And we also want to label for our Y. So our Y lab is going to be equal to count. Right, and so we run that again. Uh, a nice little shortcut I found uh, to just run stuff real quick so you don't have to highlight it or come up to run is, is command enter on a Mac. It's probably like control enter or something on a, on a Windows. Um, so that's, that's kind of a nice little hack, a little shortcut there. Okay, uh, so there it is. Maybe we want to add some lines though, right? So we want to say, uh, we want to put the median on there. Um, so we say uh, ab line, so ab line. And then in here, we put v, right? So this is going to put a vertical line on our graph, this v. That's what that does. Uh, so we'll say the mean of air quality dollar solar radiation. Right, so what this is going to do is it's going to look at all these solar radiations, everything in the whole histogram, and get the mean of it. Um, we'll say the color we want equal to red. And then you can actually change the thickness of the line by this LWD, which I, I think stands for line width. Um, and you noticed when we first came in here that we had missing values in our, in our vector here. And with the histogram, that, that didn't mess anything up. So even if you have missing values, it's just going to plot what it has there. But here with the mean, we're going to get an error. Or it's not going to work, right? Because we have missing values in there. Um, so it's important when you have missing values and you're doing the mean to say na.rm is equal to true, right? And this is in our mean here. So what this is doing is it's removing the NAs, removing the missing. Okay, so now we have a red line on there. And that signifies our, uh, our mean. Uh, let's say we want to do another one for the median. Uh, this is going to be pretty much the same thing. Median, air quality, dollar solar R. And we're going to remove our missings, our missing values. Let's color this one different. Let's do blue maybe. And let's make this one maybe a little thicker just so you can see the difference there. We'll do a line with the five. Helps if you spell median correctly. <laughs> okay, so now we have some two different lines. You can kind of see the different colors on there. Uh, we'll probably want to label these, right? If someone saw this histogram, they'd say, what the heck is this? I, wh why are these lines on here? I don't know. Um, so we can make a little legend real quick if this goes away. Uh, so let's do a legend. And the first part of your legend, you say, where do you want it, right? And so we're going to say we want it uh, in the top left top left right so that's what the x is where where are we putting this and then we uh, label our things 
So we have the mean and we have the median on the graph. Um, we say what color they are. So our colors, we had red and we had blue, right? So we're putting our, our two different colors that we had there. And then our line width, we had two and five. Again, if you haven't seen these little C's before, this is just saying we're catenating that we're right. We're putting these two together. We're pretty much creating a vector here of mean and, and median, right? So mean is red and it's has a line width of two. Median is blue and it has a line width of five. So you can kind of read it like that. Um, but if you put that on, then you're gonna have a, a beautiful thing right there. One last thing I'll show uh, is if you ha wanna have a certain amount of breaks, right? This kind of just defaults and it was like, okay, well, 50s looks good here. But let's say we wanted to have breaks at, at every 25. Uh, something that you could do, and we'll put this up top in case you ever are gonna run this again. Uh, we'll say our breaks, and in here we'll put a sequence from the low to the high by how many, right? So we're going from zero to 350, right? Zero to 350 by 25. Right, so those are our breaks. Our sequence gives us that uh, that we just found there. And then up here in the histogram that we first started, we'll just put the breaks is equal to breaks. Right, and then we can run this all again. And it'll have breaks of 25 in here instead of, instead of 50. So you can get maybe a little more detail out of it. Okay, I hope this video was helpful. I'm gonna go through the same process, but using ggplot which is like a really awesome package and it's, it's kind of state of the art. Um, so you can click on that link if you wanna watch that video as well. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them below. Subscribe if you wanna see more awesome tutorial videos similar to this one. And thank you very much for your time watching this video. I hope it was helpful.